Hello everybody and welcome back. Our party are in this large arena and they have befriended two wolves. We've told the wolves to stay. We don't want them trotting after us. There is a good chance that they may cry out or run forward into an ambush that maybe we would rather avoid. I have to say, when I saw this map ages ago, I was hoping that this large area would have more going for it, but it's a rather small encounter. So we're here, and we're determined to find out what is in here. Why are we determined to do that? Well, because we have on several occasions come across this idea that these hobgoblins are ruled by, well, we think maybe a powerful magic user. And we've got into these chambers here, and they were very human, or elf even. So we believe this is the headquarters of the person in command. The other significant thing about today's start is that we have two levels up. Both Carrick, our dwarf, and Sylvia, the elf, have just crept over their next level total. This is significant because Sylvia gets a second level spell. This makes her, for a brief moment, just as good a spellcaster as Malin. And for Carrick, he becomes level 4, and this means his Thaco drops by 2. So it has gone from 19 down to 13. 2 for his new level, 2 for his strength, and 2 for his plus 2 sword. And that also affects his missiles. His Thaco for his crossbow drops to 16. He gets a dex bonus of 1. Now let's roll for hit points. Let's hope they're good. Karak is on 17. He has got a plus 2 from the Magic Fountain to 19, but he is meant to be a frontline fighter. 6. I'll go with that. He is up to 23. Nominally 25. His health goes from 14 to 20. Now I'm glad he gets no constitution bonuses, so anything from 5 to 8 I consider good. Sylvia. Sylvia's last throw was a 1. I'm, I'm dreading this. Oh, it's a 5. That's good. Right. She gets a plus 1 constitution bonus, so that's 6 altogether. Her health goes up to 14. Maybe she will decide to melee a bit more often, especially since I've introduced line of sight as a Thaco penalty. Okay, well that's good. But now Sylvia gets a second level spell. We have a scroll with web on it, so she won't be getting that. She can copy that from the scroll. So the spell I've decided to give her is Phantasmal Force. Range 240 feet. Very good. Concentration. Okay. Volume 20 by 20 by 20. This spell creates or changes the appearance within the affected area. The magic user should create an, the illusion of something he or she has seen. If not, the DM will give a bonus to saving throws against the spell's effect. If the magic user does not use the spell to attack, the illusion will disappear when touched. If the spell is used to, quote, create a monster, it will be AC9 and will disappear when hit. If the spell is used as an attack, a phantasmal magic missile, collapsing wall, etc., the victim may make a saving throw versus spells, if successful, the victim is not affected and realises the attack is an illusion. The phantasmal force will remain as long as the magic user concentrates. The magic user moves, takes any damage, fails the saving throw, concentration is broken and the phantasm disappears. The spell never inflicts any real damage. Those killed by it merely fall unconscious. Those to turn to stone will be paralysed and so forth. The effects wear off in 1d4 turns. Well, that's incredibly powerful. You can effectively knock people unconscious merely by the illusion of a collapsing wall. This is a very tactical spell, and I could see it coming in useful if you were pursued by something and you round a corner and you create the illusion of a blocked wall. There's some cats fighting outside. So that is Sylvia's second level spell. It doesn't really come into effect until we find somewhere decent to rest. So we have to make our way from here. 
all the way around to here because as I said we're determined to find what we think may be the leader of this and I've got one two three four five six one two three four five six a wandering monster check will take us to there there isn't anything and another one will take us to here There isn't anything, and another turn will take us to here. And this is one of the likely places we think this missing area may have a secret door. So we'll take a turn to look for it with Sylvia. She doesn't find anything. It's grim. Now that will be two turns in total. And we're not disturbed. So let's go into it this civilized sitting room and try here and yes she finds the secret door okay now that took another two turns to get there and to look for it and we aren't disturbed now we push the secret door open and we are in a corridor we can see a little door at the end so liz is going to try and move silently which she succeeds very well with a roll of six and then she's going to try and listen at this door and she doesn't hear anything we might as well describe who is in here before we barge in when we do barge in we will see a table a bed several chairs and seated at the table is a hunched and scrawny figure apparently riding on a sheet of parchment he is a third level cleric his spells are protection from evil and detect magic not very much of a combat spell detect magic and his name here is more vaco but <laughs> from several sessions ago a comment made me think of father jack from father ted right we believe someone is behind this door what well, we hope to find somebody behind this door now he has got quite a good ac of two and hit points of 12 so let's open this door now this guy he knows something is wrong so he is quite tense he could surprise us just as much as we could surprise him and we do surprise him we barge in we see him there and immediately move in for the attack let's do three melee attacks because this is quite a tight corridor and our archers are here our little dwarf Gareth is also an archer and Sylvia therefore is going to take his front line place. So let's do Donard who misses. Let's do Sylvia. She has a plus one sword which altogether hits AC 5. That's a miss. And then we have Donard Carrick who <laughs> with his new Thaco utterly misses. He charges in and sticks his sword into a chair. Right, that's our surprise round. Now let's roll for initiative. And we get initiative. Good. Let's try that again. Donard hits AC4. That's a miss. Shame. Sylvia hits AC2 and does 2 damage. He's down to 10 HP. And Carrick misses, hits AC3. His turn. Now he's going to cast a spell. And, well, a spell is protection from evil. We aren't evil. That might be protection from good. So he's going to cast protection from good from himself. So his AC goes down to zero. Round two. And we get initiative again. Right, we have at least room for Liz. Who misses then we have magic spells and Sylvia is going to cast one of her magic missiles and that does five damage he is down to five HP we have two melee and that is Donard who misses and we have Carrick and look at that shows off his new skills easily hits and kills this evil cleric 
and he dies with a cry of drink women's knickers and then collapses to the floor let's pause and get our breath and then loot this room everyone enters into the 20 foot by 30 foot chamber of the cleric they stand around his broken body another evil cleric liz asks rhetorically she looks at donard how many different versions do clerics come in that's a stupid question donard snaps back Liz, being derogatory towards him, stung. Why is his skin that colour? asks Sylvia. The cleric's skin was, indeed, a pale pinkish green. Perhaps it comes from eating goblin food, Malin suggests. But look at his teeth. He did that himself. The cleric's mouth is frozen into a sneering rictus. He bears a row of teeth that have been filed into points. Carrick kicks the hand that is holding the mace. It is an evil-looking weapon, the metal presumably steel, has been blackened. The pommel is a little grinning demonic head. It could be magical, and thus worth something, but no one wants to touch it. What a scrawny, hunched-up wart of a man, says Donard. He gives the corpse a kick. This is not the leader of an army, even an army of hobgoblins. This is a sycophantic toady. He only survived here to do their bidding. Doubtless, he thought he was better than them. So where is our missing leader? asks Sylvia. Everyone searches the room for anything that might tell them more about the monastery and the hobgoblin raid. Carrick is the one brave enough to search under the cleric's filthy, soiled bed. He waves his spear around and hits something. He uses his spear to sweep the find along the floor from under the bed. It is locked. Liz points to the keys on the cleric's belt. Someone else can touch them. Malin does, and one of them opens the box. Inside are a couple of filthy coin purses. Malin picks them out gingerly and drops them onto the floor. Colin de Filch, with little pride, swipes them up. Dirty money is still money, he says. Donard stares at him. Haven't you gone through a goblin's pockets? The thief asks the cleric. There is also a potion in a vial. Someone will have to take a sip of that to see what it does. Malin, ever curious, does. His fingers fade slightly. It seems to be a potion of invisibility. Lying underneath these is a folded cloth. Malin takes it out and unfurls it. It is a cloak of good quality. Sylvia says, let me have a look. He gives it to her. She runs her fingers over it and nods approvingly. It seems to be impervious to the filth of the room. This is an elven cloak, she says to Liz, much like the one you're wearing. But I think the quality is finer. You're the one who can make best use of this. She gives the cloak to the thief. Liz discards her old cloak and throws it onto the bed. While everyone is watching her put on the new one, Colin takes her old, discarded cloak. The search of the room uncovers parchments and journals in a language none can read. Written in a deranged, scrolling script, this cleric seemed to have spent years churning out this gibberish. There isn't a map, a battle plan, not even a history of the place. They all leave the chamber agreeing with Donard's assessment. This was a squalid wart of a man. But we have at least uncovered this area and unmasked somebody. Now let's see if Sylvia can find the secret door between here and the temple, which seems extremely likely. Ah, she doesn't. So we have to make our way back, and by the time we get to here, it's you know what time and we're okay then by the time we get to here we're fine we are back to this junction here which <laughs> looks a complete mess i'm gonna put an arrow here right and let's roll for wandering monsters again oh and it is right oh dear i wondered if we'd see any combat this session okay and we have a wandering monster table for this dungeon. And it is goblins. Two to eight of them. How many goblins? Two of them. Okay. Let's roll for surprise. And they surprise us. So they attack uh, Carrick and miss and they attack Donard and miss 
they got surprised. That was their round. Let's roll for initiative. And we get initiative. Okay. Liz is going to try and fire an arrow. Oh, and with all her bonuses, she hits and does six damage. She kills one. Let's go from Donard. And he hits and he kills the other. Okay, well that was a short fight of two wandering monsters. And it's brought us to this large junction here. And we can either go east or south. Let's take a vote. One to three east. Four to six south. And everybody apart from Carrick wants to go south. Okay, well that takes us to two doors. And let's listen at this door. And she hears nothing. So we move into this room with our usual front line. And we find in the corner a statue. Now this is a statue of that evil deity or demon that we've seen everywhere. But this one is partially broken. It doesn't look like this is a place of worship. Okay, now we have this door here. Or we could cross the room. Let's listen at this door. And we don't hear anything. So let's move in. And we see a corridor. Now we can tell from our sense of direction that we've been here before. Or we can go further in here. Right. Let's roll for one more wandering monster check. We don't find anything. Or nothing finds us. I'd rather we clear up behind us. When we looked eastward, we saw a door here and a door here. Well, with infravision. Let's listen at this door. We don't hear anything. So let's pause for a minute and get ourselves into place before we open up. Okay, our party are going to open this door. On the floor are the bodies of three more adventurers. Let's read up a little. Battle room. This room is void of furniture. The bodies of oh, two humans, who obviously died violently, are sprawled across the floor. One is wearing plate mail and carries a shield and a sword, whose blade is broken. The tip of the sword lies across the room from the body. Strapped to his back is a quiver holding a dozen arrows and a longbow. The other dead human is wearing a deeply gashed leather armour. A short sword lies on the floor beneath his body. Well, we're going to go over and look at these poor souls to see if there is anything on them that might be of use. We don't find anything, but let's roll a dice. Now that was for the DM's purposes, nothing happened. Now we might look at their stuff, because when we cast Detect Magic on the things we found here, we did find a ring and a magic short sword. Maybe there's more stuff here. You know, they are adventurers, and adventurers tend to have magic stuff. Okay, we'll spend a turn casting Detect Magic. And sure enough, the longbow glows. And a little glow appears here in the corner of the room. I'm going to roll some dice for everybody. If anybody gets a 1, or if Sylvia gets a 1 or a 2, they spot this little glow out of the corner of their eye. It's not going to be obvious. It is ring-sized. And nobody sees it. Okay, so we miss out on that treasure. But the time we look up from these bodies and examine this longbow, this little magic glow has faded and this goes to insignificance. Now there is a slight typo. We're told that there's a body of a mage lying here. That was the third adventurer. It is currently invisible, and it says the dead ma magic user is invisible because of a, of a ring of protection he wears. Now surely that should be a ring of invisibility. Now we can stumble into it if we're looking for secret doors. Again, another typo. If the character states he or she is searching for the room's east wall for secret doors, which is here, we will find the corpse. But we're also told the corpse is in front of this secret door. If you're wondering what this strange creature is, we may find out. 
So while we spent time doing that, nothing seems to go wrong. So we go out, not in those two turns, has anything come looking for us? No. So we come to the end of the corridor here. We see something going down here. Well, let's listen at this door. Liz doesn't hear anything. Right, this might not go too well. So we open up the door. Sylvia is going to take that new longbow. She has a longbow plus one. Her missile Thaco goes down to 18. Now we open this door here and we see it is called an aviary. This room is actually a giant bird cage. Having heard the door open, a flock of brightly coloured birds have taken to the air from a number of perches. They utter piercing shrieks and zoom towards you. These are piranha birds and they're rarely fed so they're starved and will ravenously attack any creature so unfortunate to have opened the room. Right. Okay, now what is a piranha bird? That is a new monster for this module. And this is a nice illustration of a piranha bird and it's described as looking like a parrot really. Bright gaudy feathers, always hungry for meat and a rather sharp looking beak. They have a hummingbird like maneuverability. They can make sudden changes in direction or even hover in the air. Right, they don't like sunlight and have limited infravision. They will always attack warm blooded creatures and do not have to check morale till half the flock has been eliminated. And the morale is quite high at 11. Now they don't have a good AC. They have an AC of 6. They have a Thaco of 19 and just 1 to 4 hit points. But there is 8 of them. Now I'm going to roll to see if they surprise us. They don't. Let's roll for initiative. And they get it. So let's do 2 on Carrick. It's a miss. It's a miss. They need a hit 20 to hit him. They need a 19 to hit Dunbard. It's two on him. And that's two on him. Right. Now who are the other two going to attack? We'll have two on Liz. Has an AC of four. So they need a 14 or more to hit her that's one hit for three damage so she has taken three damage she's down to 11 and then two on sylvia it's a miss she also has an ac of four and that's a miss right our turn missiles let's do malin with a throwing dagger He's going to go for the one that's on his sister. And he hits. And he does one damage. That kills one of them. Then we have Colin de Filch. Who hits. That's a 17. And he kills the other one on Liz. I think he quite likes her. And Gareth Ironhand is going to shoot the one that's on Sylvia. And he misses. Right. Melee. Donard is going to attack one on him. And he misses. They have an AC of 6. He hit AC 7. Carrick is going to have a go. And he hits and kills the one on him. Round 2. They attack again. Right. There is one, two on Carrick. It's a miss. It's a miss. Two on Donard. It's a miss. And that's a miss. And then two on Sylvia. That's a miss. And that is a hit. And that's three points off her. She's down to 11. There should have only been one on Carrick. Right, Argo. Now during that first round, Liz and Sylvia, who were attacked, didn't get a chance to shoot. They whipped out their swords. So we have 
We have Malin with another throwing dagger. Who misses. We have our thief Cullen de Filch. Who hits. Kills one on Sylvia. We have Gareth with a longbow. Uh, with a crossbow. Who misses. Shame. Just misses. And then we have melee. And then we have Liz with her short sword plus one. Who misses. She's not really very used to a short sword. We have Donard. Who misses. And then we have Sylvia with a long sword plus one. And yep, she's not really used to that weapon. And Tarek, who's got one piranha bird on him. Who misses. God, that was a bad melee round. Round three. We get initiative. Right, let's do Malin with another throwing dagger. He's thrown a lot of these. And sometimes he hits, sometimes he misses. At some point, they're going to blunt and break. He can't just keep throwing them and picking them up off the floor. Oh well, yes, he hits. Now he gets a minus one to damage because he's weak. So that's only one HP still. He hits the one that's on Sylvia. It's still alive. Cullen de Filch shoots and hits one and kills it. Gareth Ironhand is the only one that's in Sylvia and hits and does the one damage needed to kill it. Now we have melee. There are two left. There's one on Donord and one on Carrick. And Donord misses. Liz rushes over to help him and she misses. Sylvia tries to help out Carrick and she hits and does two damage to it and Carrick tries to help himself and that hits. His Thaco is 13. He hits AC6 and they have AC6 and he kills the second one on him. There's only one left. It is on Donard and it misses. So we've round four and our go again. Let's see if we can just melee this thing off. Donard misses. Liz swipes at it, misses. Sylvia swipes at it, misses. Tarek hits and kills it. All that went on a bit longer than I thought. We'll get our breath back. We have uh, some damaged people. Liz and Sylvia, who we are not used to taking damage, both got bitten in that round. I might use the Staff of Healing on at least Liz, but I'm gonna end the session here today. And we're in this room and we don't have much to search for. Again, we don't know where these corridors go, but from my point of view, we've nearly cleared out this area. And maybe next time we will actually finish this level and to all intents and purposes we might actually finish our mission and foil the hobgoblin raid okay so until then i'll see you